Hi, welcome back to the part 4 of creating 2D platformer series. In the previous videos, we showed you how to draw your character in Photoshop, how to import it to Unity, how to rig the character and do the idle animation. Then we showed you how to do the run animation and all the related codes and adjustments required. And in today's video, I'll show you how to create the jump animation and the related codes and adjustments. Uh, I got inspired by the jump of Kratos from God of War game, so I used that as a guide for my jump animation. Let's start by creating a new animation clip and name it Viking Jump. To start with the animation, it's the best, I think, to copy the keyframes from the idle animation. So let's copy those to our jump animation as a start point. Then all what we need to do is to move the hands and the legs to the desired position at the end of the jump animation. Since we rigged the character in previous lesson, it's now very easy to do any animation we want. So let's just move the legs backward. Also, let's raise the hands up and check what's happening. Sometimes it doesn't go as you expected, so you need to create another keyframe between the current keyframes to fix any problem happens due to the automatic animations. So let's create a keyframe to fix the axe movement. Just give it a, a better position so it does not break then we need to rotate the body a bit forward to give that feeling of jumping also we can rotate the helmet to the right a bit and as a final detail we can rotate the beard to give it some movement during jumping okay seems good enough now and since the jump animation is not repeating animation, so we need to go to that animation and uncheck the loop time because we don't need that animation to loop, like walking or running. It's one time animation. Before we proceed with coding, I noticed that I didn't place the capsule collider collect correctly, so let me fix that. Let's open the player movement script. We need a public float jump power. Also, we need to create a new public function called jump. And we pass to it vector2, the direction of the jump. Then the concept here is very simple. We access the velocity of the rigid body. We fix the velocity in Y to zero because we want to start the jump from zero velocity without any variations. And we keep the velocity on X, which is generated from the player movement horizontally because we want the player keeps its velocity from moving right to the and left. Then we access again the rigid body velocity and add to it the power of, of the jump toward the direction we set. Now we can call the jump function in update when the player presses the jump button and we pass to it the vertical axis, the y-axis, by uh, passing vector2.up. Let's save and set the jump power to 10 in the inspector and check what happened till now when we click play. As you can see now, the character now jumping but it's not linked to the jump animation so we need to link that by code right now click on the player and go to the animator now we need to make a transition from any state to the viking jump animation and we will trigger that using a new trigger called jump then we click on that transition and we set the condition is the jump trigger we just created. Now let's go back to our code and use that trigger when we press the jump button. Make sure that you type the name of the trigger correctly 
even capitals are sensitive here. Now pressing the jump button triggering the jump animation but we didn't set what will happen next so we, we stuck in the end of the jump animation for now. To fix that issue we need to create a collision script. We will be using that to detect the collusion with the ground to check if the player is grounded and later in the next videos we'll detect when the player is touching the walls or colliding with the walls. In this code we need a, a public variable layer mask to set the ground layer and we need a public pool to check whether we are on the ground or not, if the player, player grounded or not. Also we need a public float to set the radius of the collision also we need uh, a vector 2 so we can control the collision point for being grounded and finally we need uh, a color to draw the gizmos of the collision to draw uh, a wired circle you'll see soon then on update we set the value of on ground bool using the physics 2d overlap circle which will create a circle its center is our character which is transform.position then we add the offset to it to set the offset exactly on the ground and its radius is the collision radius that we specified by the float we created and finally we detect only the objects that are on the ground layer so in later in the scene we will set the ground to a layer called ground be detected using this function so if we are colliding with something on the ground layer then the on ground bool will be true if not it will be false now to be able to see the circle that we created we need to Add a private void on draw gizmos when Unity draws the gizmos. Uh, we set the color of the gizmos to gizmo color, which is red. Then we tell the gizmos to draw a wire sphere using the character position and the same uh, ground offset and with the same radius. And the reason we are using the vector 2 is because the transform.position is vector3 and the vector2 converts vector3 to vector2 let's save and go back to our scene we need to go to the ground game object and create a new layer called ground and assign the ground to the ground layer then we go back to the collision script and we set the ground layer to ground we give uh, a radius to the collision 0 0.25 is good i think and we offset it to be at the bottom end of the character hit play and make the scene run minimized not maximized to check the on ground bool you can see the on ground bool now is on while the player on the ground when we press jump and the collision is stopped uh, the on ground become false so the bool is working now we need to link that bool now with the animator to change the animation based on that Now let's go back to the player movement code and link the collision code with it. So we need a private collision, name it collision, and on start give a reference to it using get component collision. Then we set the animator, we set the bool of the animator on ground to collision dot on ground bool. 
Now we need to go to the animator and add a new bool on ground, same way as we wrote it in the script. This is case sensitive and we create a transition between the jump and exit and on the condition related to that transition we set on ground to be true so when we are touching the ground we transition between the jump we exit the jump animation same case for the idle and the run we create a transition between the idle and the exit and we set the condition on ground equals to false that means when we start jumping we exit the idle animation or the run animation in all those transitions make sure that to remove the exit time because we don't need the animation to complete itself to exit it also set the transition duration to 0.1 it's enough hit play and now we can transition between the various movements perfectly we can jump so the jump animation starts and when we hit the ground we go back to the idle animation i increase the jump power to notice the jump in a better view and as you can see it doesn't feel good nor realistic it feels like a jump on the moon because the gravity is not good for 2D games so to solve that the best solution to do a better jumping was provided by board 2 bits games so I give all the credits to that guy and I will provide the link to his video in the description using his method we apply a different gravity when the player is jumping also when he is falling so we apply more gravity when the player is falling so it takes a longer time for the player to reach the peak of the jump and then it falls slowly like in super mario games so in the player movement code we need two floats one for the fall multiplayer and one for the low jump multiplayer Then at the end of the update function, if the velocity of our rigid body on the Y is less than zero, that means the player is falling, we add to the velocity on the Y axis, which is vector.up, using the same gravity on the Y, and we multiply that with the full multiplier, and then we multiply that with time.delta time. Let's initially set the full multiplayer to 2 and the low jump multiplayer to 1. That means the fall is double the gravity there. Then let's set the other case when the velocity on the Y is higher than 0. That means the player is ascending while jumping. And when we release the jump button, we copy the same code for falling and we change the multiplayer to the low jump multiplayer. Hit play and we started to get a better jumping now. But based on my experiments with the values I found that setting the gravity scale of, of the rigid body to 3 and setting the fall multiplayer to 3 and the low jump multiplayer to 8 gave the best results for my character. So let me know if you did this, which is the best values for your characters, for me those was the best. And here we go, we got the jumping animation linked perfectly with the animator using the codes and the animator parameters. Also as you can see you can do higher jumps by keeping holding the jump button and you can do low jumps by just tapping the jump button. I thought we finished the video for today, but wait a second, what is happening here? We can do endless jumps, but we are not doing a Flappy Bird game here, so let's solve this by going to the jump section in the update function and set that possible only if the collision on the ground is true. 
so we can jump only when we are on the ground not flying in the sky and you did it now your character for the 2d platformer game feel small alive i hope you enjoyed and benefited from this video let me know in the comments if you liked it and what you suggest for the next videos would you like to see the uh, wall climbing animation or maybe dashing or wall jumps we will see thank you for all your support your comments likes and share means a lot for us we have reached uh, a high subscribers by your support also we really appreciate uh, our patrons on patreon who supporting us financially to keep doing more high quality tutorials and videos don't forget to smash the subscribe button and the notification bell not to miss any next videos till next time see you soon